Hey Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glister Elf here. Someone left a comment on one of my other videos saying that they liked the mono white deck that I was running in Historic, and so we're going to get a chance to jump back into that. So it is, do 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 do, this one right over here. This is more or less a finished version of the deck. There are some other options that you could have, but I don't know what I would add to it. Uh, <laughs> So really quickly, it starts off as a Luris deck, so everything in the main board is going to be CMC 2 or less. Uh, and then it has 16 creatures. And just really quickly, let me bring up the stats for you. As always, if you need to, pause in 1080p to actually read the cards. Uh, so 16 creatures, and judging by these types, you can probably guess what's going on here. Uh, 4 artifacts, which are amongst the creatures, and then 27 enchantments. So. We have uh, All Seed of Life's Bounty as one of our one drops. Uh, this is just the way that you protect one of your other creatures, and that's really important because <laughs> Core Spirit Dancer needs to not die. This card can take over a game on its own. Uh, it's, it's pretty ridiculous how out of hand this thing can get. If you don't answer it on turn two, or win the game on turn by turn four, you lose. So, Core Spirit Dancer, there you go. Why is this thing in his <laughs> in Historic? Thank you, Jumpstart. Uh, fun fact, I did not use... I only used one wild card. I uh, found three of the enchanted packs from Jumpstart, and they all had Core Spirit Dancer, so I got, I got a little lucky on that. Uh, next we have Ginger Brute, which is the easiest to cut. This one could be something else, and it probably will be replaced at some point. The fact that it's potentially unblockable is pretty consequential, except something like a fifth-ish of the meta, at least on MTG Top 8, and anecdotally this feels about right, is goblins, which can be given haste pretty readily. Uh, so in that matchup, it's not so great. Otherwise, it's fine. It's It also gets to dodge Ugin, if somehow your opponent makes it that long. And then we have one more creature. I have Hushbringer, which is... A necessary evil. Hushbringer is a flying lifelink 2-drop uh, that makes it where creatures entering or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. So this matters for things like uh, Stitch Supplier out of Rakdos Aggro, the Rakdos Pyromancer deck, which is itself also a Luris deck. It matters for also Archfiend's Vessel in that same one. Um, but there is a lot of the cards and goblins Anything that enters the battlefield, or dies, it's, it's, it's written on the tin. Uh, but, for Croxa and Uro specifically, while they won't draw a card once they enter the battlefield, or Uro won't draw a card, gain three life, or let you get an extra land, Croxa won't make you discard a card or lose three life. They do actually get to stay in play, because uh, entering the battlefield doesn't cause the sack it if it didn't escape trigger to occur. So they get a 2 or 3 mana 6-6, six, six, and they will get the attack triggers out. So it's a little awkward, but I think it's something that you have to do. I have still beaten those decks before, but you have to get big to, to do that. <laughs> Alright, so that's, that's this. Um, as for the auras, we have 4 Cartouche of Solidarity. Just It makes an extra creature, and... First strike and plus one plus one, it's great. Gets played in Bogles for a reason, in Modern. Uh, Glaring Aegis, which will tap down one of their creatures, also improves your creature's toughness to keep it from getting, say, shocked, for instance. Uh, Sentinel's Eyes gives it Vigilance and can come back, and plus one plus one. Solid Footing is the worst, I think, by a pretty substantial margin. It's, it's definitely the one that's most likely to go. Uh, it's only plus one plus one. It is a one drop. And if that creature has Vigilance, then it assigns uh, damage equal to its toughness. It's not a choice, it has to. Which means that for Luris, well, Luris actually gets debuffed, but Hushbringer and Core Spirit Dancer get buffed. So, it's still okay. And it has Flash, so you can use it as a combat trick, you can use it to save one of your creatures from removal, if it's damage-based and you get there. Uh, but that's not... Eh, it, it's okay. It's okay. It'll get cut eventually, though, when we get something else to add to it. Uh, then we have All That Glitters, because of course you do. It's not quite ethereal armor. It does a little better. Ginger Brute is an artifact, so the fact that it counts artifacts does matter, I suppose. Angelic Gift as a one-of. Because we already have one creature uh, that can become unblockable, one creature that has flying... Uh, there you are. And one creature that can give protection... 
I don't know that I need too many angelic gifts, but a single one to make sure that a core spirit dancer can fly over is fine. Plus, because it draws you a card and it doesn't have to target one of your creatures, if you don't have a creature, you can target one of your opponents and use it as a two-mana cantrip. I've had to do that to get myself out of a sticky situation before. Uh, beyond that, we have uh, Sentinel's Mark, which is plus one, plus two, Vigilance, Flash, and with Addendum, you can give your creature lifelink until end of turn. Uh, which, again, with a Core Spirit Dancer, is silly how much life that will gain you. Uh, beyond that, we have one Castle Ardenvale, because there's basically no opportunity cost for having one, but I only have one, otherwise it would be more. Uh, Fifteen Planes, Four Secluded Step, and a Bonders Enclave, which would be another Castle Ardenvale if I could have one. Uh, Secluded Step should be pretty self-explanatory, it draws you cards. Bonders Enclave also can draw you a card, and it can do it turn after turn. But because the creatures don't naturally have four power or greater, this only works probably when you're already in a situation where you're likely to win anyway. So it's not necessarily all that great. As such, it would be another Ardenvale. Plus, you'll notice it doesn't make white mana. It matters for some of our uh, some of our auras, but also I'll see it on turn one. It, it, it can matter. It, it hasn't mattered too much, but it's there. That is something that should be noted. Uh, but otherwise, yes, another Castle Ardenvale. For some reason, this thing is not legendary. Now, another thing to point out, though, why do we not have any copies of Idyllic Grange? And I do run this in the standard version of this deck. Uh, well, the reason is because if it's one of your first three lands, it's guaranteed to come in tapped. And you can get into a situation where you need that mana sooner, and you just don't have it. Plus, it only gives a plus one, plus one counter, which is really consequential in standard because of how ubiquitous Heartless Act is. It still sees play in Historic, of course, uh, but it's not... I would rather have the ability to draw myself out of a, a bad top deck than give a plus one, plus one counter to a creature. Uh, feel free to disagree. That could actually... I could take the Enclave out for a Grange. Maybe that's correct. It is a Plains itself, after all. Uh, but for right now, I'll keep it the way that it is. This does, after all, come in untapped, and so for like a turn two, all that glitters, or a Core Spirit Dancer, I would appreciate that. Now, before we actually get to the deck... And, and there's no sideboard. It's made for best of one. Just Luris. That's all. Before we get to the actual deck, before we actually get to playing it, I have some packs to open, so let me crank the audio up just a little bit so you can hear. I picked up a 2021 pack, let's see what's in here first. Why not? Hey, it's Sad Robot. A little less sad. This one, I, I don't generally prefer the arts, uh, the, the ones that aren't the original arts. Part of that sentimentality, but part of that is what is going on in this art. It looks like a robot version of a Bloodborne character. <laughs> Aside from that, oh, I can use this in EDH. That's actually fire. That's actually good. Alright. Or a Brawl, I guess it would be on here. Uh, oh yeah, so I haven't opened too much Syndicar Rising at all. That's why I have so many packs here. Um, oh, a second one. Okay. I can use that. I can definitely use that. Alright. Let's see. Coming up next... Kazandu... Okay. So this is the, um... The bigger, like, Step Links style creature, I suppose. Uh, there is a color-shifted Step Links in the set, but this one... I mean, it... Okay, that, that's cool, I guess. It gets to serve as a land, or it gets to be just a, a bigger zoo creature. Zoo, that's the term I was looking for. All those little creatures that <laughs> swarm the field for you. I haven't seen that in a hot minute, basically in any format. 8 Whack is the zoo of modern, and it's not a thing in Legacy anymore. True Name Nemesis killed it a long time ago, like 2013. Revenant came out. Oh, I got a Selesnia Dual Land! Oh, heck yeah, I can make use of that. Oh, heck yeah! <laughs> I was actually looking to stock up on those for a Collected Company deck I would like to build. So that's nice. It's really nice. Alright. Oh, this is the one that Evangeline likes the, the art from. Like, the, the body paint. And I said it has the Jojo reference. It's the Red Stone of Aja. 
Uh, let's see. You don't? Okay. Leaves the battlefield. How do I not remember this card? Hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, that doesn't seem all that great, to be honest. It is a spirit, so maybe I can use it in historic spirits. And it does get rid of basically any permanent, but I wouldn't like to give my opponent a creature back. Though, if I'm playing... No, this thing doesn't even fly. Never mind. It doesn't make the cut. It needs to not fly, though, actually. That's, that's important. Alright. Inscription. Okay. Another card I'm going to make great use of in EDH. Alright, so, but 8 mana gives me all of them. Let's see. Okay. <sighs> um, honestly, because it's sorcery speed, even the second mode doesn't seem all that great. But, I guess it's okay. I mean, it's meant to be over-costed because of all the, the different options you have. Utility needs to be balanced in some way, and that's how they do it. It's the modern player in me, I keep, and legacy, and, and vintage. I keep wanting to have as much going forward as possible. Alright, what is this? Cost one less for each creature in your party. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Squad Commander. Core Warrior for each creature in your party. Aha! Uh -huh, I can see some white weenie going... Well, uh, it wouldn't be mono-white. Beginning of combat, if you have a full party creature you control, get plus one plus seven gain indestructible. Jeez, that's that's a payoff card. Hello. It actually doesn't it seems a little slow though, doesn't it? Well, Uro's out now, so maybe. Grekmaw. Uh, enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters. Whenever another creature you control dies, if it had a counter, put it onto Grekmaw. And then when it dies, create an XX black and green Hydra creature token. Or X is the number of counters. Okay. Yeah, fair enough, I suppose. There is actually a, a two-mana Selesnya card in Historic now. It's from uh, Guild's Block. Or block. That you can use to... Uh, it, yeah, Guild's of Ravnica. It's like a hardened scale on a creature. You increase the number by one? Or maybe it's it doubles it. Anyway, that seems like it might... If I want to go for Junk, if I want to go for Obzon, that might combo with it. Let's see... Alright, who's next? Spoil- aha! Uh -huh. I am playing this in modern, I am playing this in modern, no I'm not even kidding. It's for a changeling tribal. This is a payoff in changeling tribal. Because I am ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, Valakut Exploration. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play a card for as long as it remains exiled. Cool. The beginning of your instep, if there are cards exiled with it, Put them into their... Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I, I see what's going on here. Uh, it's not use it or lose it, it's use it or you get to deal some damage. That's nice. Also, I missed the bunny. Evangeline would have liked to see the bunny. I'll show it to her. Oh, blue the pack. Look at this. <laughs> I'm blue. Okay, so another one of another 400th into the royal. Okay. First for this though, my second Null Priest. Huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I guess if I if I do want to go for like a Jun Zhu, Null Priest would be kind of neat. I'm trying to think of something that's not meta, so something that's not already been done to death. I will say though that with the exception of the Dual Land, I didn't really see anything that jumped out at me, unfortunately. Uh, but I guess before we before we start brewing up, I did say I'd play that. You know, cast 20 white or black spells. Nice. Alright, let's jump into ranked, actually. Sorry, Merfolk. Uh, let's move you out for... Well, I'm on my home connection. Uh, and yeah, we're going to get to the ultimatum decks in a bit. Uh, but I am on my home connection, so the internet could conk out on me. Oh, boy. I'll try it. Alright, we'll see. But the first time it happens, we're out. I shouldn't risk it. I'm on Platinum too, so... Also, I could just lose. <laughs> that could happen. Supernova Sunset. Ooh. 
Okay, this one we keep, and we take out the angelic gift. Well, no. Hmm. Oh, this is tricky. This is tricky. I'll live without the gift. Oh, hello. There we go. I'm moving it to the front. I'm trying to hide which card. It makes it look like I might only have one hand, uh, one card in my hand. Or oh, land one card. I need some more coffee. I have it right there. I clearly need more. Okay. So, we'll play these two. I'm actually going to fire away and then draw a card. I'll hold up the secluded step. I don't feel very good about this game already. Having a mole against a Yorian deck. That, that doesn't seem ideal. Alright. Alright. What you got? Also, no Karametra's Blessing in this one, which it probably should have. To be honest, it, we probably should. Okay, so whichever one I put this on, it is absolutely dead. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. It's dead. Um... I think that Allseed is more likely to die here. If I can find another land, then that'll give me the chance to play all that glitters and protect my... Oh, sorry. Protect my creature. Alright, flash. Flash something in. Omen. Okay. I thought it was Flyers at first, and then the black mana showed up, so... Yorian Flyers, I've only seen a couple times. I know it's a thing, but... I don't know. Oh wait, no, it wouldn't have been Flyers, right? Oh, that's fine. They played it tapped. That deck has enough one-drops, they could probably get away with it. Alright. So, good news. She's gone. Uh, that's, that's, let's play out sooner. Let, let's get out our big guns now. Uh, put this on the Ginger Brood, I believe. And the reason is because I'd like to be able to swing through whatever they have going on later on. Alright. You go here, you go here, and you go here. I would not like my opponent to get another card. Let's not say we didn't. One weakness to doing this, though, is that uh, while I do have lethal on board, and they can't just fire off the... Oh, well, now they could fire off the Thought Erasure, because now they have enough mana to- oh god. Ignore me. That- that happened. Ignore me. Alright, let's- let's sneak it in. Alright, hiya. Jeez. Um, with the Sentinel's Mark, it probably would have made it where any one creature would not have been enough. To fairy, okay. How are you going to do this? I haven't seen to fairy in historic in a while. Still good though, obviously. All right, pass it right along. Uh oh, we're not getting there, folks. Life gain doesn't really matter though does it? Um, I don't want to play out another creature. That that seems pretty clear to me. Definitely don't want to do that. Uh-oh. Um... Let's see. If I go for two here, then with Sentinel's Eyes, I'll have lethal in two. And 
And even if they take the sentinel's eyes, I'll still be alright because it can come back from the grave. If I had any better buff, then I would have gone after Teferi there instead. Okay. Yeah, not having Karametra's Blessing is a problem. It's, uh, in the context of this deck, it's like a better blossoming defense. It's Doom Foretold. Oh my god, it's Doom Foretold. Yeah, take the Hushbringer. Alright, uh, Demonic Pack kills the Ginger Brute next turn. That's fun. Please, can I find a land? Oh boy, okay. Well, we can save it, actually. If I go for Sentinel's Eyes, I'm, I just lose the Ginger Brute. That doesn't, that doesn't actually work. So because of that, it doesn't actually change the clock. I'll, uh, I'll swing it to Fairy instead. See what they say. Because on the next turn, I'll use Sentinel's Eyes, and it'll be 3. 3 times 2 is 6, as opposed to 2 times 3, which is also 6. <laughs> uh, and also, it wouldn't be 2 times 3, it would just be 2, because I would lose the Ginger Brew. Or it'd be 3, I should say. 3 times 1. Anyway, alright, what mode? What mode? I mean, they have to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, at me? Oh. Okay. If they had pointed at Ginger Brood, I could have blanked the life gain, because it wouldn't have had a valid target. I figured they were going to make me do it. But, no? I guess not. Alright, that mode has been used, and there's still not a Doom Foretold yet, dude. <laughs> Alright, land. Luris, please. Oh, great. Oh, great. Yeah, they don't need uh, Doom Foretold right now, because they have the power of blinking it. So make me discard two cards and you win the game. Okay. Good game. Yeah, at this point I lose. I I can't I can't beat that. Ah, that's on me. And if I had not added Luris to hand, I was dead anyway. They draw two cards. At some point, I'm going to have to add Luris to hand. So I just wanted them to misplay, and of course they didn't. It's one of those I. I am I am dead as long as they don't misplay it, but I'll play it out moments. Maybe I could have waited, but Oh, that's right, no I couldn't have waited. They had thought erasure. So they could have held me off for yet another turn had I done that. Yeah, no, I was just in I was Dunskis. <laughs> Dunskis there. It's a very technical magic term, Dunskis. So I got to where I am this season with uh, Collected Merfolk. This, that was actually the first game that I had played in Historic Ranked that wasn't with Collected Merfolk. G. Stefano. G. Stefano. Stefano. I don't know. That seems cool. Awaken my masters. That's enough. Okay, yes. Two lanes, three creatures. That's fine. Even if they kill the first spirit dancer, the second one gets to live in all likelihood. Uh, but it's red. You never know. Oh, no, it's goblins. Rush. Rush. Yeah. This one's all about getting that...
getting that uh, tempo in as quickly as possible. Skirt Prospector, geez. Actually, unironically, the best ramp spell in the format right now. It's silly. It's ridiculous. I say that, and then they give that up, so I don't actually know what's going on then. Alright. E again, even if they kill this thing, we're in okay shape. 19 all. Because if they kill it, I'll play the second one, and the- uh, You got to be kidding me. Okay, uh... Well... How do I- I guess the, the way that I get through this is the double spirit dancer plan. You just need to hurry. So I have a Sentinel's Mark. That should keep me in for a little while. Alright. If I could find uh, Angelic Gift to give flying, then we're we're in... Oh, wait a minute. That's a Glaring Aegis. No, that's not enough. Uh, then we're okay. Another War Chief. This is a... Uh, Krenko is stupid. Very technically. Krenko is stupid. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ooh, what just... Okay. Uh, we don't need to do it yet. Oh, wait, but they all have haste. So this will be ten on the next turn. Ten extra goblins. I will need some life gain. So I'll put them all into the spirit dancer. Alright. Lend me your strength. Find angelic gift. Oh, another one. That's uh, not what I meant, but that works. Oh, actually, no, we're getting we're getting really close. Because I have an all seed out. It can give protection from red. We are actually we're getting dangerously close to that. <laughs> oh my goodness, I feel okay. Never mind, we're in good shape. It's like remembering that it's remembering that you have a power that you can use in an anime right before the fight would end. Oh yeah, my stand can do this. Oh no, okay. Um, we might be able to make it. All right. Uh, the top one's a prospector, so they can play a prospector out. Um, Matron is doing its thing, so they won't get the prospector, unless, no. Do they get, they could get another Muxus, right? No, they don't have another prospector yet. If they could play this one at instant speed, then they could. Oh, you little... Oh wait, it's only to creatures. Only to creatures. That's fine. I can live with that. Alright, well... Rest in peace, baby core spirit dancer. Because, uh... You're, you're in trouble a bit. Uh-oh. Alright. I've got to give him the nice for that. That was neat. Alright. 14. Why even bother distinguishing them? <laughs> they all have haste. Oh, just you. Whee! Uh, huh. I shall not miss blood. I, I think they realize it. I think that they realize what just happened there. They're one mana shy from being able to cycle to kill the all seed. Alright. I'm just going to go a little crazy here. Completely unnecessary, but I'm doing it. Actually, no, this... <laughs> while it is unnecessary, I am... I am getting my, uh... My quest completed. Alright. Yeah, let's draw. And tap down. Who cares? Uh... You. Specifically that one. Alright. 
make sure it, it hits the spirit dancer and not one of the enchantments underneath. Protection from red. Hi-ya. Bang. This is the only deck that I have in Historic that I think has a better than 50% chance of beating goblins at a given time. Uh, Hushbringer flies over them and stops quite a few of their uh, Enter the Battlefield triggers from taking place. Uh, Muxus, Goblin Matron, Goblin Ringleader, the occasional, like, what's it, Chain Whirler, stuff like that. Um, and then you have that. <laughs> um, the life gain is actually not that substantial. Life gain essentially is a time walk in that matchup. You don't win, but you get another turn. And it, it certainly gave me one there. Because without it, they could have just swung out and I would have been done. Though had there been another card, well, no, it's fine. <laughs> if it had been another card, it wouldn't have been as good as, as Sentinel's Eyes. Not Sentinel's Eyes. Uh-oh. Look at that land base. But they go first. We'll keep it. I think this is better than a mulligan. Better than a better than average six. Better than a better than average six. <laughs> Uh-oh, though. That's a lava runner. We may not have time. Especially since Spirit Dancer is dead. Oh, it's a Thermo Alchemist deck. Okay, Whale. Uh, play it out. See if they can kill it. I'm, I'm sure they can. It's Mono Red. If they do, great. If they don't, the next Spirit Dancer will have a shot at it. Alright. Oh boy. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Hey. That's pretty good. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. No blocks. Uh rest in peace, spirit dancer. You're 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 dead. Um alternatively, since they're tapped out. I can wait. We have enough time. I can wait. No, I can't. This might have been bad. If I play the Spirit Dancer, guaranteed it just eats a removal spell and dies. This way, because they're mono-red, I might, just maybe, can sneak some in. I'll be able to get past their damage. Uh, Damage-based removal. At least that's the hope. That's the... Doing. That's the game plan. Oh, I just stared right into a light bulb. <laughs> ah, it's not a, not a great idea, folks. Trust me on that. All right, and there it goes. Now a lightning strike style effect will kill Ginger Brew. That can't be an oops. No, it's not. Okay. All right. Well, I need a Sentinel's markings. Uh-oh, they're going again. That's an extra five. Jeez. But since they, oh, what are you, oh, do they just have lethal now? One, two, play anything else. Ah oh, ha ha Good game. Look at that. What's the Smash Bros? Wow! Incredible! <laughs> Welcome to a deck that can just belch out its hand. That's actually good. That's cool. That's neat. I'm glad that Mono Red can do that. Jumpstart, though. Wow. I have zero room to judge, though. I'm over here playing Core Spirit Dancers. Zero room to judge. <laughs> I have my computer set up in such a way, and the screen is dim enough that, you know, see, here's, here's my screen. Look how, look how bright that is. Um, <laughs> uh, it's reflecting onto my shirt, so anytime I, I need a smile, I see Sonic on the shirt. Ooh. 
Ooh. Ooh, let's go. Oh no. <laughs> that was terrible. Okay, it it work it works out. They'll expend it on the uh on the all seat, hopefully. Oh, it is goblins. Alright. Well then. Fire. Actually no, that works out great for us. Alright. Uh let's do spirit dancer first. I need the raw speed. If it dies, that's where Hushbringer comes in. Which it could die here. No, no, not really. If they have another one drop, then they could cycle Gem Palm Incinerator. But they need a land and another one. No, they don't. Okay. Ah! So they could sack both of them for conspicuous snoop off the top. I have a suspicion. No, they didn't. Sneaking suspicion they weren't about to do that. Okay, so if there's Gem Palm, or conspicuous snoop, I think that I can wait on the Hushbringer. I think I need to wait on the Hushbringer. Let's widen our board a bit. Aha! <laughs> yeah, it just got out of, it already is getting out of control. See, they, they had uh, something that let them cheat and see my screen and see that it um, <laughs> That, be careful about keeping those hands, folks. One land, one one mana creature, three one mana auras. I say that like, I say A-U-R-A -A, like O-R-A, like I'm Jotaro Kujo from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> I'm just having a good time. This is coffee. Mind you, this is just coffee. Alright. Ten times karma. Or it's extreme, extreme karma. Uh, I, I have a bad feeling about this, but we'll keep it. I don't know why, but I, I get a bad feeling about it. Maybe it's because I've played Karma before, and I might be getting an inkling about what's being played. Hmm. I mean, the, the hand seems like it plays itself. Uh, turn one, tap land, turn two, Hushbringer, hope it lives, and then go to town. If we're up against something like Rogues, then we're okay. For some reason, that's what I'm thinking. That's what's coming to mind, anyway. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I have played Carmen, I just... I don't know. Well, let's find out. It's almost giving us the Dark Souls, like, well, what is it? Alright, buddy. Oh, nope. My internet. Had me for a sec. <coughs> Alright. I'm, I'm watching my internet. Alright, it's just them, but... I, uh, I better be careful how often, how many more of these I do. Okay, I was wrong. Thank goodness I was wrong. It does mean that this Hushbringer is just dead, though. So... What I could do is I could play out the Ginger Brute and let it and let it die, I guess. Ooh. Ginger Brute Sentinel's Eyes. Yeah, because I, I really would like to keep this Hushbringer alive. So let's let's let them use it up early. Alright. Here goes. Here goes. There it goes. Please don't have another land. If this is a one land hand, then I am in okay shape. Maybe. Oh, I know that feeling though. How are you, everyone? 
Alright, so they had another land. This Hushbringer... I now don't have a choice. I have to fire it off. The alternative is to play an Angelic Gift just to cantrip. That does not a win make. Plus, it would make it fly, which means it could block my Hushbringer. So we just have to force it and hope it works. Hope we can keep it. I'm gonna guess no, because now even a raw skewer is fine. Even a raw skewer. What? Skewer the critics. That sounds like some culinary-based torture method, though. Okay. Yeah, that's not an ETB, though, so... Uh. Alright. Shock. Alright. Now I have to block. Because if I don't, Skewer gets online. So we'll block here. They have a trick. They obviously have a trick. Ah, uh, I shouldn't have blocked. Uh, Skewer... If, if they hit me, Skewer would allow them to deal the damage to Hushbringer. Because at that point they would have... What's it called? Online. Spectacle. There we go. Alright, Spike Field Hazard. Alright. I chose poorly. It didn't matter, I, I found something at least, but... Jeez. Yeah, it was exiled, wasn't it? Okay. Well, at least now if they try to do that again, we're in okay shape. Yeah, often the temptation is, remember that if they... Oh, jeez, nice. Uh, the temptation is that if they attack, they obviously have a trick, right? Um, I probably should have gone on, gone with that assumption. If they attack, there's clearly something up. It would have served me better there. For sure. Alright, they're tapped out. Kind of. They have Runaway Steamkin. No blocks. Alright. Anything else? Now. Solid footing. I swear. I swear. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Ah. Uh. <laughs> no! You stop that. Ah! Okay. So, uh... We have enough time that I can try. All these lifelink creatures that just can't get to stick around. I'm trying, my, I'm trying, folks. I'm doing my best. Alright, so that's light. That's uh, two, five, six, seven, eight. Eight just from this. So we're looking at uh, seven from creatures plus another hit from Thermo Alchemist. Oh, actually, we're dead. Yeah. Even if I find a land off the top, we're dead. Chain Whirler. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I, I can count. There's not anything that I... Well... We'll play it out. You win 0% of the games where you can see. So if I find another creature, if I find um, Hushbringer, and I equip Hushbringer with Sentinel's Eyes, Enchant it with Sentinel's Eyes. I think that we still lose. Yeah, we do, don't we? So that's two. Yeah, we still lose. All Seed. All that glitters wouldn't save us. Um. Oh, never mind. Doesn't matter. Give him the nice. Hey. <laughs> what can you do, folks? Mono Red is comboing. This is not supposed to be a bad matchup. This is supposed to be okay, because life gain, if you can keep a creature around. 
This is why Modern uses hexproof creatures. And Pioneer, for that matter, uses hexproof creatures for all these. Although in Pioneer, there is a version of this deck that... There's an Auras deck that doesn't run hexproof creatures, and it just uses ridiculous card advantage off of uh, Hopeful Eidolon and I'll see it again, and the legendary Cacophony 2-drop, Enchantment Matters 1, stuff like that, the, the black-white one. And then for people like me, there's the Slesnia one, the green-white one, and it does run Hexproof and SROM. Also SROM's in both, but it runs uh, Glade Cover Scout. Why not? And uh, in my case, Basara Tower Archers. Basic mountains. BASIC mountains. Uh-oh. I mean, we keep. This one, we won't get there, though, unfortunately. Give him the hello. I won't forget this time. Ooh. Oh, we did get there. Why be... Okay. Um... Let's play out a, a solid footing instead of the ginger brew for two reasons. Firstly, I would not like to dedicate too much to my board in case this is a Wrath of God deck, or a Settler Wreckage, etc. Uh, two, this will power up the all deck litters. Okay, now this is just mud. We're playing against mud. Hmm. This is fine. It was that or the solid footing glaring Aegis. Oh, you... They can pop it immediately. They're not, though. Alright. Yep, there we go. I don't dislike that. Ah, oh, sorry, Ginger Brute. This is not going to work out too well for us. I hate to say. How about... How about I not dedicate too much to the board here? Let's just make it where creatures without haste can't block. Go to combat. Take out Karn. And... Pass the turn. So Blast Zone is a problem. And if they just hold that up for the rest of the game, we're still not in great shape. Well, wait a minute. Oh no, they still have the mana. Let's see, they used four, two... Okay, so now we have a turn of reprieve. That's a four, four. All right. Can I make a win here? I cannot. This is probably not smart. We're trying, though. We are trying. Alright, so this improves them by two. One from Sentinel's Mark, one from All That Glitters. Seven. Cartouche. Oh, Cartouche! We have to play that. Blast Zone. Uh, cannot hit the token. So from this point on, we can start dedicating stuff to our token instead. Unless I have lethal. Do I have lethal? Hedron Archive. So, Glaring Aegis, tap it down. 11, solid footing. Does it have Vigilance? It does, I put a Sentinel's Mark on it. Alright, so whoa, 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 okay. Glaring Aegis, 10, 11 from All That Glitters, solid footing, 12, 13 from All That Glitters, then it counts based on its toughness. So yeah, we're good, we win. There's no spatial contortion. <laughs> Why would that matter, anyway? Let's try to think of something that can get them out of this. Tap it down. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I didn't have a good feeling about this. I don't know why I doubted myself. Oh my god, I swear. If you do anything with that Hedron Archive... <sighs> okay, well, we're, we're, play we're keeping even so far. We have a 3-3 record tonight. I'll go till I get one more, just doing my usual four wins. 
that's my that's my routine. And maybe we'll play a game of Brawl as well. We'll show off one game of Brawl. With, um, I guess I want to save the, the jankier ones, the zanier ones for later. I'm a little bit surprised that my brew, I guess, the deck sort of writes itself, is doing this well in Historic Ranked. It, I don't think it should be, but it is. Which, okay, I'll, I'll take that. Oh, get over there. Oh, nice. Alright. And then next we'll do Bonders Enclave. We'll see what my opponent's playing. I'm guessing Goblins. Yep, it's Goblins. Oh, jeez. I swear. Yep, okay. That's fine. That works out. Whale. Whale. If it's Goblins, this is the better play. But if not, then it should have been Hushbringer. Probably. Yep, it's Goblins. Okay. We're good. GG. Now this is going to be my only one for this turn. Unless I draw a land here. I did not. Okay. Well. Yay. Nailed it. Alright. We can still win this race. <laughs> And that's why Hushbringer is okay. That's not why. It's more like cards like Goblin Matron. I think Chain Whirler is usually a one of in these lists, and because they can get it with Matron. Okay, so let's see. I can do Solid Footing Sentinel's Mark. That may be a bit early though. What am, what's my life total? Eleven. Yeah, let's let's just pile it on now. Ooh. Another Sentinel's Mark, so we can do it next turn as well. Yeah, yeah. Base Cannon has been powered up. <laughs> that was dumb. That was great. Okay, before the internet finally kills me, I'm going to I'm going to bail. I'm sorry. We're bailing out of ranked. Um, that has happened too many times just on camera. So. I guess we'll go to Brawl, and I haven't played Brawl since the season started at least, so there's- oh, that's right, because it only lets you do standard Brawl. It doesn't let you do historic Brawl, or friendly, or whatever. Okay then. Whale. Whale. I guess you don't get to see all of these just yet. You'll see them. Just not yet. I guess in keeping with the theme of the video, I'll play Lurus. Give Lurus a shot. Probably just just one, if that's okay with you all. Just one. It plays exactly the way you think it plays, except Lurus isn't in the sideboard. <laughs> Lurus is actually just my commander. Is there a different turn in uh, Brawl for your commander since... Oh, jeez. Uh, since it can also be a planeswalker? Are they a brawler? I hope so. I hope so. I would love everything about that. Alright. Let's do this. Sort them this way. Hmm. So, land. Land, Charming Prince, Scry 2. Land Lurus, probably. It's an Omnith deck, so I think Lurus is probably better. Get Lurus out sooner. Infernal Scarring. When it dies, draw a card. Hmm, okay. Oh, hello. Uh, huh. Nailed it. Whale. Okay. Get out our Charming Prince. Uh, let's scry to it. Doom Foretold. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, against the Omnith deck. Ooh. Let's go. Let's 
let's go. So if I can play Luris here, and if Luris lives, then I can sack something like Charming Prince and play it back every turn. Though we might be a little bit late. Also, I, I didn't pick the best, I didn't pick the optimal lands. What is this? Interesting. Command Tower is in the format. Of course it is. Of course it is. Alright, so, uh, guess that means that we have Omnith to worry about next turn. Alright. Each player's upkeep. Sex a non-land, non-token permanent. Yep, there we go. There we go. Okay. I'm hoping that this will work out for me. Hoping. Maybe. Crossing Fingers, Hidden Dragon. Crossing Fingers, <laughs> Hidden Dragon. Let's go. Uh-oh. So they gain a bunch of mana. Uh-oh. I do appreciate that we have a four-color commander that we can use, though. That's kind of neat. Uh, they might just actually outpace Doom Foretold. Crazy as that might be. Alright. So what's this? Enchantment enters the battlefield. Ah, uh, we still need to do this sooner. Nope. Pass. Alright. Yeah, Dryad probably has done its job, I would imagine. Yeah. If we can if we can keep going another turn or two, then we should be okay. Big if though. Oh, big if. Uh, that's a decent ask against the Omnith big mana deck. At least I get to break the symmetry of it, though. Um, okay. So on this next turn, I can sack Charming Prince, play Charming Prince, scry two, Infernal Scarring, so that I can get an extra card to draw. Let's, uh, let's not block. That seems like a bad idea. All right, what you got? Huh. That's a pretty decent hit, though. Don't play anything else. Please don't play anything else. If they didn't pump, though, they have something else to play. So what's it going to be? Why is Command Tower in this format? Someone please explain that. What are you again? Oh boy, okay. Um, that means that I can go... Banishing Light. If I play Banishing Light getting rid of you, then I can put something onto Lurus and be alright. Yeah, let's play Infernal Scarring. We're going to take a hefty hit here, though, unfortunately. <sighs> okay. Rada or Omneth? Don't you just love breaking symmetrical effects like that, like Doom Foretold? It already breaks itself because on your upkeep you can just sack Doom Foretold, if you need to. Like how you can sack Smokestack. Oh boy. Oh, well, there that goes. Alright, little do they know, I have a plan. I have a plan. Alright, this does not have trample. No, it does, yeah. That's right, Gem Razor naturally has trample. It has reach and trample. I remembered reach, I forgot trample. Okay, so things we can do here. If I had another land, I'd play Archon. 
Um, let's go Charming Prince from the yard. Scry 2. Agonizing Remorse. How many cards do they have? Not enough. Let's put it on the bottom. Sentinel's Eyes is interesting, but I think that I'd rather have another land, actually. I believe that that's better here. Now, let's see. All that glitters actually gives me plus three, plus three, which puts it at five toughness. Which is, and this is true, enough. even have a blocker, though, again, Jim Razor has trampled. If they mutate that again, though, I'm in trouble. Uh, you know what? We have nothing in the yard, so I'm actually kind of tempted to block with Charming Prince here. Let's do it. Let's block. Because that'll let me reuse its, uh, Scry 2. That seems kind of nice. Alright, surely they have something. Yeah, they do. They definitely do. Alright. Yeah, let's put that in our command zone. Yes. Could we play it again? Yes. We did get to draw a card, though, so we're probably going to go Archon... Ah, there's Clothis. Okay. Yeah, let's go... play Archon into... We can actually hold up Indomitable Will. Let's do that. It itself has lifelink. Alright. The fact that it gets to take something out of my yard, though, is a little bit disgusting. Especially all that glitters. That would have been nice. It's okay, though. I wasn't going to have a chance to get it back anyway. I was shy on mana. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh dear. So this is a 7-7 seven, seven with Vigilance. I can live with that, but that's not great. Alright. Pass. My turn. Nope. Nope. First. First. For my next trick. Now we can play Lurus into... Getting back Infernal Scarring, or Charmed Prince. Does it matter which one? I mean, I guess. Infernal Scarring would give me another instance here with Archon. So that's probably better. Let's put it on to you. Get another. And let me make sure you don't have Reach. You aren't even a creature yet. So, hiya! Bang, bang. See, this is, this is working out. Doom Foretold is silly. Oh, there it goes. Speaking of, I don't know why they got rid of Doom Foretold, though. Because this is a Lurus deck. Charmed Prince, Charmed, yeah, Charmed Prince. Charming Prince? Seems like the better one. I guess they're worried about other kinds of recursion. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, they kept it on top, so they played the 7-7 Vigilant Giant. No, not yet. Ah, uh, no, no blocks. Back. Ow. Look at her life totals. <gasps> no! Oh, jeez. Well, at least they got rid of their stuff as well. No, they didn't. Uh, never mind. Yes. Oh boy. Oh boy. Woohoo! Hmm. If I play Lurus, it just dies immediately. Actually, no matter what I play, it dies immediately. So I can go. If I wait, no.
Yeah, we're uh, we're in trouble, folks. We're in big trouble. Holy heck. Uh, yeah. All right, let's play all suit out. And they'll try to shoot it with Ugin. They'll succeed in shooting it with Ugin. Um, if I play the Knight's Pledge, it just dies. I could do a minus one just to exile it. Wait a minute, yes! Oh no, they'll fire at it. They won't actually do that. They'll just fire at it. Alright. Especially if I could get them to use the exile ability, then they'd be at two, which they would have to fire at Luris, but actually that doesn't matter. Oh my god, will you stop? This was a wild game. We looked like we were in okay shape at first. I thought, maybe. Yeah. Now we're done. If I can find another land here, Luris, play something out of the yard. Uh, but even then, though, we wouldn't be able to survive a minus from Ugin. Revoke existence. <laughs> Why? Why hast thou forsaken me? I mean, I guess we'll play it. I have to make him do it, right? That's about all you can do. As many mana rocks as there are in Brawl, I figured Revoke Existence made sense. Yep, fire. Yep, okay. Yep. Nine mana, Luris. Uh, uh, Luris is a little less good when it costs 9 mana. And there's nothing I can do to get out of this spot, unfortunately. Because then, if I could find a way to kill Ugin this turn, I don't know how. How? Um, Angelic Gift, draw into... All the glitters is already... Exile. Oh, well, there's Heliod. Alright, so when I gain life, plus one, plus one. Oh, wait a minute. I have Revoke Existence. Why did I not do that? Oh well. Yeah. Devotion is three? Yeah, let's put that on you. Doesn't matter, but okay. I just want to feel better about myself. And then we'll exile this. I just want to feel better about myself. About my decisions in life. All right, and cut. <laughs> That's what's about to happen anyway. And cut. Oh, all right. Shoot. Shoot, partner. All right, we're still out of Ugin range, but minus and I lose. Just do it. Just. Do it! Actually, I'm dead anyway, but just do it. No! No! Minus one. Just to be cheeky. No, okay, they're just gonna point it at my face. Specifically my face. Okay. Well, well, that... <laughs> Good game. Good game. Alright. Uh, <laughs> kinda wanna do something silly here at the end. No, let's just let's just show them, I guess. Another creature gains life like until end of turn. I mean 
I guess. I could use Heliod to give Lilion as steward lifelink. That totally makes a difference. Totally, folks. Just fire. Just power up the base cannon. I've said that a bunch of times this video. It's, it's, a uh, only Afro Dark Souls video. And let him have it. Let him have it. Sometimes I concede there when I know I'm dead. I'll just let him have that one. Okay, that was not ranked, but, uh, go Magic Arena, go. <laughs> <laughs> it does that. I, I don't know why, but it does that sometimes. When you play ranked and then you move into not ranked, until you close the program out. Like, if I do that, if I play another game, it'll repeat it. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. That's it for now, I guess. Uh, take care, Magic Community, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.